each year brings a raft of new drugs that have been approved by the FDA. And of course, the challenge then is, what do you do? How do you get them into practice? And exactly in ASH, they have an acclaimed webinar series that really helps you uh, figure out what is what. Here at ASH 2016, there's kind of a live version of this. And so what, in order to take a look at exactly what we're talking about, we're going to take a look at uh, Dr. Stephen M. Ansel, who is an MD and a PhD and a chair of the Mayo Clinic Lymphoma Group in Rochester. This is a special education session on newly approved drugs. And the one you're really dealing with here, it's, it's a drug called nivolumab, which is in oncology, but this is what's new is hematology indication. That's correct. So what's exciting about it is that we've benefited from all of the hard work done in the solid tumor space that uh, showed that blocking PD-1, that's the uh, target of nivolumab, is highly effective in diseases like melanoma, in lung cancer, and a variety of other solid tumors. That's now translated into high efficacy in Hodgkin lymphoma particularly, but efficacy in other lymphomas as well. Now, with any new agent, it's important to have a clear understanding of who the patients were who were studied, including who were those patients who were not studied. So who is this for and who is this not for? So right now, what we know and what it's approved for is for patients who have had frontline therapy, subsequent stem cell transplant, and then progress, typically having received brintuximab vedotin. So it's in relapse and refractory patients. And in those patients, the response rates have been very high. Where it's not yet approved is the use of it before stem cell transplantation, the use of it after allogeneic stem cell transplant, or the use of it in frontline therapy. But all of those are now being tested to see whether approval can be received there too. So any adverse events that we need to talk about? Well, again, you're activating the immune system. And when you do that, immune-related phenomena can happen. The encouraging thing has been that that's been a relatively uncommon event and about 10% or less of patients have those kinds of problems. But you see lung issues, skin issues, bowel issues, all related to inflammation from the immune activation. Now when you're going to, you're going to consider this for a patient, what do you tell them in terms of this is what to expect, this is whether it's the side effects or, or outcomes, what do you explain to the patient? I think one of the things that's great about this agent is that you can give them a lot of pretty good news, and that is our expectations are that the response rates are high, the response rates are durable, and the side effect profile is tolerable. So those are the kinds of things that any treating oncologist loves to be able to say. Absolutely. So we're talking about a Hodgkin lymphoma patient who's tried multiple therapies and they've come to a point where there's no clear step, so we're hoping that this may be the next the clear step. Correct, and I think actually the good news is the label says that is your next step, and uh, that's kind of where it's being used as standard practice. Is, is this an orphan drug status? Is this correct? An accelerated approval, right? So what's next? Well, next is to say how can you use this in a much earlier line of therapy? I mean, ideally we wouldn't like to have to use these agents only when people have suffered through multiple right. disease failures. So if this is something that could be incorporated into frontline therapy or into the first time a patient progresses and really increase the number of cures, that would be fantastic. So that's being tested in multiple trials right now. So you're optimistic, you're, you're happy that you have a new, uh, a new tool? Absolutely, and I think many people in practice along with me would share this, the excitement. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's been great for many patients and the hope is that we can make it permanent as far as good outcomes are concerned for everybody. There is a lot of news coming out of ASH 2016. Please check it online where uh, I am at right now and where you are, as well as in ASH Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire.